One of the most common Vulkan related questions I'm getting asked on a regular basis is, I modified one of your examples, I'm loading up my own model and even though I'm sure I did everything correct and the validation layers don't report any errors, I don't get anything drawn on the screen except for the default clear color. This is such a common question I'm getting asked that I decided to make this short video tutorial that shows exactly that situation in a modified example. And in the second part, we'll be using RenderDoc to find out why your model is not visible on the screen. So this is my PBR example that I just modified. It loads up a simple cube mesh intentionally scales it a bit, puts the camera inside of it, and with the PBR pipeline having backface culling enabled, running this example will just give you the default clear color, even though there's no validation layer errors, the buffers have been correctly uploaded, vertex data and shaders are correct. So even though it looks like the model is not rendered at all, it's actually there. If your example has some kind of camera system, you can simply move out and see, wow, it's there, everything is fine. So in the next part of this short video, we'll be firing up RenderDoc and see what we can do to find out why our model is not visible. Note that I'll be using an unstable release of RenderDoc 1.0, though compared to the latest stable 0.9 release, there are only minor differences in what we are going to look at. So we'll be running our modified example that only renders the clear color, and we'll do an initial capture of a current frame. So once RenderDoc has captured the frame, it'll take us to the pipeline state and fill the event browser. Now we are going to locate the Vulkan command that issues our rendering, which is pretty simple as we only render one single object, the cube. So as you can see in the right side, you get the state of the Vulkan pipeline at the moment this draw command was issued. So these are your vertex attributes. Now, if you don't use the validation layers, uh, your first step would be to compare these to your actual shader layout. If uh, these match, then everything is fine. Next step to check, pretty important. Uh, most of you will be passing matrices via uniform buffers. So we're going to see if our matrices are actually passed correctly. So we move to the vertex shader and this is the UBO that I use to pass the matrices. Clicking here, I get this nice visualization. I can see the model has an identity matrix, and this is my projection matrix, viewing matrix, and the rest of the parameters. So without uh, debugging my code, I'd say these look okay. So, but for example, if you uh, this would be a complete zero matrix, um, you'd have to check your code and see if you're actually passing the UBO correct or if you got something like this right wrong. So if this is correct or looks correct, we'll take a look at what data is passed into the vertex shader to make sure our buffer has actually been uploaded correctly, which is this one for the vertices and this one for the indices. So just click on this arrow and you will take into this mesh visualization tab, which is pretty cool. On the left side, you get the values that are passed into the vertex shader, which is actually what you have uploaded via buffer upload. And on the right side, you get the vertex shader output post transform values. Now, visualizing these in your head would be pretty tough. So RenderDoc offers you this nice 3D visualization of all the data that's get passed into the vertex shader. So first, let me change this. So our buffer is correct. Why? Because this is the cube we have uploaded. This is the cube that gets passed into the vertex shader and it actually looks like the cube model that we have loaded in our application. So next step, we are going to take a look at the vertex shader output. This is the post transform after all your matrices have been applied in your vertex shader. So if your vertex shader is doing what it's supposed to do, you've applied the model, ma model matrix, the view matrix, and the projection matrix to the vertices, and this is the output you get. And now, as you can see, our cube looks a bit different, and we got a nice visualization of the frustum. And as I said earlier, the reason our cube is not visible is simply because backface culling is enabled, and the frustum is completely, the frustrum starts inside of it. 
And that's exactly what you can see here. The near clipping plane of the frustrum is completely inside of the cube, looks at one of the cube's faces, and the cube's faces is not visible because of backface culling enabled. So here you go. That's pretty simple. That's uh, easily doable for every example. Just run it through a render doc, take a look at the vertex shader output that displays the post transform of your model. And um, if it's somewhere behind your frustrum or completely outside of it, you uh, just have to check your matrices and yeah, maybe scale down your model or transform it so that it's actually inside your frustrum with uh, all faces visible. So uh, to compare this, we'll now be doing this again, but uh, just with the camera at the right position. And now instead of capturing the initial state of our application, we'll be moving out a bit. So we can clearly see that our cube is rendered correctly. We capture that frame. Navigate to the draw command of our cube. Check the mesh output. And first we see that the input is still the same. Nothing's changed here. Interesting part is the vertex shader output, the post transform. And as you can see now, the cube is fully inside of our frostrum between the near clipping and the far clipping plane. And so this is the opposite situation where the mesh is rendered correctly, just to compare it. Thanks for listening and watching.